Hey yo guys, how are you doing? Last time we talked about objectively bad PS3 games, but today I want to talk about some guilty pleasure games of mine that have a bad rap. These PlayStation 3 games are usually not held up in a very strong light. But are these PS3 games really that bad? Or has time and internet bandwagoning just given them a bad name? Yes, many of these games do have issues, but the question is, are they really deserving all the hate and bad scores? Today we are going to find out. So grab yourself some pizza, kick back and make yourself comfortable and let's get the kick out of gaming. Let's kick off this list with some of your recommendations. Moose Lord recommended Turok and I have to say I freaking love this game and it will be featured in a future loving bad PS3 games for sure because helping those prehistoric creatures reach their predetermined health status is always a bloody good time. Lester Bronson is a fan of I Am Alive, a survival game which lets us enjoy the benefits of being one of the sole survivors in a grounded and dark post-apocalyptic world. I have my eyes on this game for a while, but since it never had a physical release, I was always hesitant to buy a digital copy. I think this recommendation pushed me over the edge. And with that said, let's kick off this list with a prime example for being a perfect target for bad scores. Quantum Fury. Right off the gate, I have to admit that this game has some issues, like some serious issues. When you start playing, you will immediately notice that the controls are stiff and the gameplay feels kind of clunky and takes some real effort getting used to. But I couldn't help myself. I really enjoyed my wild ride with Quantum Fury. My love for a certain beefy steroid friendly Xbox cover shooter certainly helped adapt to the gameplay, but what really captured my attention was the story. Set in a futuristic post-apocalyptic world where mankind is facing extinction, the world has been corrupted by strange morphing towers and as a lone survivor we are joining a ragtag mission to destroy these towers. The main character has this stoic, never give up attitude that really resonates with me. Along the way we meet up with a skimpy dressed girl who seems to be connected to all these events as well. But best of all, we can literally throw her at our enemies, which leads to some interesting combat dynamics. I really enjoyed the story and the soundtrack of this game as well, plus the enemy design and ever changing structure of the levels got me hooked. And once I got used to some of the quirks of the gameplay, I really did enjoy my time with Quantum Fury. So if you like sci-fi adventures, get the kick out of so bad it's good voice acting, are known to have some patience with video game controls and enjoy a cover based shooter, you may be surprised by Quantum Fury. And that's just a personal preference. But if a game has a great story or in-depth world building, I can easily overlook gameplay flaws. Which is the perfect transition when talking about the next game on this list. Deadfall Adventures – Heart of Atlantis. I have a soft spot and love for over the top action, daring stunts and classic adventure tales of finding chambers filled with golden treasures beyond your wildest dreams. And Deadfall Adventures is exactly that, an easy pick up and play globe trotting adventure, where we go on an epic low budget journey to raid tombs, outsmart booby traps and the axes of evil in a race to find the ancient name giving sunken city. If you can overlook the mediocre graphics and somewhat simple gameplay, you will find an uncharted hidden gem which makes every adventure loving gamers dreams come true. I think Deadfall Adventures manages to hit that perfect balance between action, puzzles and a bit of history mixed with some supernatural elements. So there is a little something for everyone to enjoy. 
Those of you that enjoy their games masterfully crafted to the finest details and have a sophisticated taste in humor should probably stay as far away as possible from the next game on this list. Duke Nukem Forever I was playing Duke Nukem 3D at a far too young age and I've been in love with it ever since. And after a short wait of 15 years, it was finally time to come get some. To say that expectations have grown to an unhealthy level might be an understatement. So when I booted up Duke Nukem Forever, I was ready to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And the story continues right where we left off. Years after saving the world from an alien invasion, Duke is chilling in his penthouse apartment, minding his own business when suddenly, and to everyone's surprise, the aliens return and steal his hot babes. So Duke is left with only one option, to one man army those goons from outer space. The first thing I noticed when playing Duke Nukem Forever was the kick-ass soundtrack, especially the covers of classic Duke songs, but also small details like boosting your ego by doing manly things like lifting weights or drinking beer to power up. This is exactly my type of gameplay. And while the gameplay was nothing groundbreaking, I still had fun with it. But let's address the elephant in the room. Why did everyone else hate Duke Nukem Forever? I think the biggest problem, as I already mentioned, was the hype train. Gamers were expecting greatness after 15 years. It was 2011, Call of Duty was at its all time high, Skyrim released for the first time, Batman Arkham City dropped and in between my boy Duke landed, with its admittedly somewhat generic shooter gameplay. Plus, some of the jokes are really hit or miss. I feel like Gearbox failed to nail the humor and charm of the original Duke Nukem, which was somewhat self-aware, but never too in your face. I have to say, even with those flaws, I would still recommend Duke Nukem Forever, if you can get it on a bargain bin price. It's not the worst game ever made, it's just an average, old school, explosive, action packed shooter that lets you save the world and some hot babes from another alien invasion. So all that's left to say is, hail to the king baby, and to the next game on this list as well. One of the bloodiest games ever made, Splatterhouse. Sometimes you want to live out your wildest dreams of putting on a mysterious mask with your dying breath and become a bulked up beast of vengeance to rip and tear those who've wronged you and saving your beloved damsel in distress. Or is that just me? Well, I can't hear you since this is a pre-recorded video, but Splatterhouse gives us the chance to make this lifelong dream come true, at least in video game form. It's one of the bloodiest and goriest games ever made. We punch, kick, rip, smash and dismember our way through the speed em up. With quality voice acting, a ton of one-liners, a good mix of 2D and 3D levels, a well-told B-movie splatter story, fun boss battles and with the inclusion of the three original Splatterhouse games as unlocks, this could also be called Splatterhouse The Complete Collection. The only real flaw that this game has are the overlong loading times. They gave me enough time to face the horrors of real life and do my taxes while waiting. But overall, small details like getting shred to pieces by undead goons and growing back together or beating the living hell out of ghouls with their own limbs makes this one entertaining ride through hell. If you're not afraid to get your hands dirty, Splatterhouse is blood soaked fun. The only thing missing in this game is riding a dragon and burning our enemies from the sky. Good thing we have another game for that, Lair. The premise is great, we are a dragon rider, so we fly around, shoot fireballs, land in the middle of the battlefield, grab a quick snack or breathe fire and burn those goons. And one of the coolest parts of Lair is when we get in an air duel with another dragon rider. Overall, 
I was really surprised how much fun I had with this game from the first mission on. The story of rivaling kingdoms fighting for power with tons of twists and turns got me hooked from the first second, plus the acting and music are just fantastic. The visuals are pretty decent looking for a game that was in the PS3's launch lineup as well. I think the biggest flaw back in the day were the motion controls and yes early on you need to spend a little time practicing and of course you need to learn how the motion controls work but once you've done this you really feel like you are flying a freaking dragon and if you download an update you can even switch most of these motion controls in the settings off. So this masterpiece gets the kick of approval. Since we need more games where we ride dragons or dinosaurs and wreck goons and after we've burned every last one of them in the middle ages it's time to dropkick into modern times and blast some undead foes in Yakuza Dead Souls. A game that is only whispered between Yakuza fans and then it gets constantly trashed on. But if you give this PS3 exclusive a fair shot and go in with the right mindset by seeing this as a goofy and entertaining spin-off to the main series, then Yakuza Dead Souls becomes an absolute blast to play. And maybe, just maybe, if you share my exquisite taste in games, then this becomes a mandatory replay every Halloween. Because the premise is simple in Dead Souls. Kamarocho is overrun by zombies and we have to find out why. So all bats are off and everyone has guns now and isn't afraid to use them. So we blast our way through the corridors and well known streets of previous Yakuza games and save the surviving citizens by relaxing in a hostess club, getting drunk or my favorite, hitting the arcades. The zombie apocalypse can wait until I beat my high score. Some reviewers even call it the best critic on modern consumerism since Dawn of the Dead. It's definitely a freaking good time if you enjoy the mainline Yakuza games and just want to go wild. And while we're at the topic of spin-off zombie games, let's talk about the number one zombie franchise in gaming, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. The twist in this game is we are playing as the bad guys, a group of Umbrella mercs in Raccoon City, which are tasked to clean up the mess of the T-Virus outbreak. We see the return of original Resident Evil enemies, iconic locations and are tasked to take some fan favorite characters for a long walk off a short bridge. Old school Resident Evil fans might have already guessed it, Operation Raccoon City is set during the events of Resident Evil 2. And since this is my all time favorite RE game, experiencing some of the key events through the eyes of the bad guys was a pretty cool premise. I have to admit that Operation Raccoon City is rough around the edges and has a few problems, but it's nowhere near as bad as some reviewers and YouTubers make it seem. Yes, it can be a bit clunky, but it's tons of fun, especially if you find one or two friends to join you on your journey to support Umbrella's efforts to make Raccoon City great again. What I have to point out though is that the main story is pretty short and can be completed in around 3 hours. And in a low IQ move, Capcom released a paid DLC which adds another 4 hours of playtime to increase their sales numbers. Did somebody say sales? The best way to buy your physical games online is with my Play Asia link. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear what some of my satisfied customers and viewers have to say. Buying games with Salesman Kick was a real game changer. Well, I'm shocked you mentioned Salesman Kick. He helped me build my game collection too. I have taken a huge step and invested 2000 Robux and 2 weeks later I'm now a proud owner of my own video game collection. What? My dog has a video game collection? Well, that was a surprising revelation. 
Now you know what to do. Use my link in the description down below and buy your games at PlayAsia and start building your game collection today. And now, on with the program. And with that said, let's kick off the top 3 spots on this list with a movie tying game, an on rails shooter and move supporting blast from the past, Rambo the video game. And I'm not gonna lie, personally I had a rough start with the game too. It has a pretty harsh difficulty curve where you have to match the reaction times of a Vietnam vet mixed with somewhat dated graphics, Rambo the video game didn't left a great first impression. Overall, Rambo sure has problems, I guess it's part of his character, but once the gameplay kicks in, like in the first mission, when we have to make it out of a Nam prison camp under heavy fire, suddenly the Rambo theme starts playing while we blasting those stray head whirring goons, it really feels like all the best elements of the Rambo movies are coming together. And I had to keep playing. If you manage to make it through the first few missions, level up Rambo a bit, this becomes one of the better light gun shooters on PS3. It even mixes up the gameplay quite a bit. I was surprised to see that there is a non-lethal way of playing some of the missions too. And in between those missions, you get some room to breathe when the backstory of the first three movies is told in flashback cutscenes at Rambo's funeral. Overall, it was a challenging but fun experience that keeps me coming back for more. But if you think Rambo had a hard time surviving in the jungle of bad reviews, then you haven't heard of Richard Machinko yet. Rogue Warrior is considered one of the all-time worst games and gets constantly trashed on even in my comment section. But how can a shooter based on a Navy SEAL's autobiography voiced by Mickey Rock himself set in the 1980s developed by the studio behind the original Alien vs Predator be an all time bad. It's time to prove that a decade of bad reviews and internet bandwagoning are wrong. First off, after your expectations for this game have been crushed by tons of bad reviews, you are in the right state of mind and ready to go, as foul-mouthed, grumpy, short-fused, third-world country shredding killing machine Richard Marchinko, we are dropped into North Korea to stop them from becoming a nuclear superpower. When our buddies drop the ball a bit too early, it's time to ignore orders to withdraw and start a one-man war with the whole country to avenge our men and send those responsible back to the stone age. And this is exactly what we do by one-liner smack talking low level goons while literally tearing them apart in this 4 hour tour de force. Where the main characters keep swearing like an 11 year old in the PS3 Call of Duty lobby after being ratioed. Sometimes even I thought Marchinko must have some sorts of Tourette. But most of the time it was pretty entertaining. Yes, the level design did not age too well and the shooting mechanics are more on the simple side, but the entertaining, puddle deep plot and over the top voice acting saved this bargain bin title from mediocrity. And if you make it till the end, you can listen to one of the finest rap tracks by the man, the legend himself. And now, on to the final spot on this list where we have a big name title that was trashed and left in the gutter for no reason. As my boy Richard would say, Max mother pain free. Max Payne's fictional tragic history did come to haunt this franchise. When Max Payne 3 released in 2012, it was a critical and commercial failure. Thanks to those hardships on release, you could pick up the collector's edition for the PS3 for under 50 bucks the same Christmas. Which I did. And when I started the game, a feeling hit me like a point blank shot straight in the face. What is up with all those reviewers? This game is freaking awesome. The controls and gameplay felt perfectly fluid and the shootouts were so much fun that I wanted to replay most levels in an instance. 
Yes, the drastic change of tone from the film noir nighttime streets of New York to the sunny, gritty and grimy ghettos of Brazil might have alienated a lot of OG Max Payne fans, but I think the worst thing for many is the sheer overabundance of cutscenes layered with that Fortnite YouTuber graphics filter and text effects on top of it. Which I have to admit, wasn't the smartest design choice. But it never took me out of the experience and it was fitting for the sad and miserable story of Max Payne 3. And even if you don't like the story, the game really hit the nail on the head with its pixel perfect gameplay and shooting mechanics. This is, even years after its release, one of the best third person shooters. Every shootout feels different and can be approached in different ways, especially if you play it on a higher difficulty level where every bullet can kill you. Sadly, Max Payne 3 never found its audience and kinda killed the Max Payne series. But maybe it's for the better. It would be hard to top Max Payne 3 anyways, because dreams have a nasty habit of going bad when you're not looking. And in today's gaming environment, Max Payne 4 would probably be a battle royale free to play shooter with loot boxes. I rest my case. So that's it guys. And now it's your turn. Feel free to share your favorite guilty pleasure game. Which game with a bad score did you enjoy? Let me know in the comments down below and let's talk about it. I will make sure that we find some common ground. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, kick the like button, sharing is caring, and subscribe. But most importantly, have a great day and get the kick out of gaming. That was fun. Was it good for you, baby? <laughs> what about the game, Duke? Was it any good? <laughs>